having a nice pair of really sharp small scissors gets hope you're all well it's Liz here this is the first part of my top 10 sewing tools the next part will be released next week I realized that it was probably a bit much of an ask to expect you all to sit for 30 minutes and listen to me waffle on about sewing tools for all that time so I've decided to split it down into two nice bite-sized videos so without further ado here comes number 10 number 10 is a rotary cutter and obviously that means that the mat has to come with it as well because it's useless without the mat but I'm just counting that as one thing. I really enjoy using these on fabrics that stretch quite a lot. They're super accurate, the fabric won't move and shift around underneath it. If you don't keep the blade sharp what you'll find is that the blade will just kind of push the fabric out of the way and you'll be more inclined to get your fingers involved and that's when it starts getting a little bit iffy. So make sure you keep your blade sharp and um, just support the fabric while you're cutting it and you should have no problems whatsoever. Please, 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 if you don't have one of these already and you're going to give it a go, just make sure that you keep your fingers well out of the way because these things are brutally sharp and uh, you may end up in any if you are not careful. Number nine is my French curve. So I absolutely adore my French curve. I tend to trace out all of my patterns onto Swedish tracing paper first. I very, very rarely would just go in and cut a pattern. That's usually because I have a funny little body and I need to make a million different alterations to patterns before they actually fit. Quite often I'll know what those alterations are up ahead of time so rather than make a muslin or a twelve I'll try and um, make some of the alterations on the pattern to start with so that might be like shortening the legs is a major thing because I have like a 27 inch in seam or something ridiculous. So what I'll do is I'll trace the pattern off first and then that just means I haven't ruined the original if it's a paper pattern and if it's a PDF pattern that means that I don't need to glue 36 pages together again. So I'll just make sure that I keep the original intact and trace the size or the mash of sizes off that I need onto tracing paper and my French curve is absolutely essential to that. So if I'm grading um, sizes together, for example, the French curve will just help me get a nice smooth line in the transition between sizes. I also use my French curve for doing things like altering the crotch curve on trousers. What I find is often my um, delightful subject that we're going on about here, but my crotch curve is significantly different to some of the patterns that I've tried on before and that can lead to like drag lines around the inner thigh and um, one of the ways to get rid of those is to scoop the crotch out a little bit more. So the French curve can assist with just get, getting nice curves basically. It also has a straight edge which is um, really useful. You get kind of two for one. Um, yeah, it does have quite a lot of little holes all over it which honestly I actually haven't um, found out what they're used for yet and if anyone has a link to a video that can teach me how to use a sewing French curve properly that would be lovely because literally all I use it for is the outside curves right now but if there are more uses for it I would love to know. Also the other thing that's quite good is that if you are drafting your own patterns what you'll find is that, or it's certainly on mine, which is, uh, I don't have a brand actually, but on mine it has um, instructions on the specific bit of the curve that you can use for an armhole, a hip, uh, back of neck, front of neckline, which is quite useful as well. Number eight, I couldn't live without chalk and pens. I was a bit notorious on the bee for getting to the stage where I cut all my pattern pieces out and then realised afterwards that I hadn't actually included any of my notches. <laughs> but I do tend to do that if I remember to do it. Heat removable pen and chalk are bits of equipment that I use all the time for marking darts and buttonholes. 
but one thing that you absolutely have to remember is because they are heat removable if you press your fabric after you've marked it it will disappear I would use my heat removable pens on most lighter fabrics on darker fabrics you will have a difficulty getting them to show so in that case I would tend to use chalk Number seven is thread snip scissors. I know this sounds like a ridiculous thing because a lot of machines have a notch on the side of them, like a small blade on the side of them. You can actually just snip your thread off using that. And for a long time when I watched sewing videos and somebody would bring out these delicate little swan neck scissors and sort of snip the thread off, I'd be like, oh, there's a thread snip on the side of your machine. What are you doing? Um, but I have learned the joy of having a really nice sharp set of thread snip scissors and they just give so much cleaner of a cut than cutting it on the side of the machine and also you can snip just quite close to the piece of fabric that you're working with so that you don't end up wasting loads of thread and also it encourages me to cut off the other end of the thread at the same time in a line of stitching so I, it just makes me remove all my little tail ends I guess. Super sharp snipping scissors are also really useful for trimming seam allowances and clipping into curves as well. So having a nice pair of really sharp small scissors gets. Let us attempt to carry on. I have changed my tripod and uh, I do apologise if there is any difference in video quality. We'll see when I start editing this together, I guess. It's just so useful to have a nice, sharp, small pair of scissors that you can trim off the end of threads with and also really useful for trimming down seam allowances. So you might need to trim down seam allowances anywhere where you'll want to reduce the bulk and also useful for clipping into curves as well. Six is Microtex needles. Microtex needles are my most used needles. Aside from universal needles, I absolutely could not live without them. They are so vital. They are a type of really sharp needle that will go through all kinds of fabrics, especially sort of thin and sheer and stretchy fabrics. In the sewing groups, I've seen a lot of people warn others away from using Microtex needles or sharp needles on, on sort of knit fabrics or stretch fabrics. I have to say, I've absolutely never, ever, ever had a problem with a Microtex needle making a hole in anything at the seams. It's just not a thing that has happened for me and I've made a lot of bras, I've made a lot of things out of stretchy fabrics. I find that Microtex needles will go through fabrics even where ballpoints and stretch needles won't. To that end I use them for everything that isn't something like woven cotton or denim and fabrics I use these on would be things like viscose jerseys, cotton jerseys, stretch mesh, sportswear fabrics, pretty much all bra making um, and they're also really good for sewing elastics as well. I recommend having some Microtex needles on hand and if you are really struggling with skip stitches or um, your needle just doesn't seem to be going through the fabric very well, it's making a horrible noise or your fabric's getting pulled down through the presser foot into the stitch plate, try a Microtex needle and see if it makes a difference. So that wraps up the first part of my top 10 sewing tools video. I hope you all enjoyed it and that you found something interesting and useful. Please take a moment to subscribe and also to hit the like button down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!